Okay, comms 101. Let's get sickening. Now I know, many of you guys probably don't know that reference. So I'll provide the source right now. Oh, y'all wanted a twist, eh? Come on, season six, let's get Thought was Lagandra Estranja, a professional drag queen, and that was her attention getter on the opening season of season six of RuPaul's Drag Race. Now, drag still isn't talking much about in today's society, but it is gaining attention in current mainstream media. I personally got into drag this year when my friends made me watch RuPaul's Drag Race, and I fell in love right away. Now, I know many of you guys probably won't, oh, all of you guys probably won't become drag queens, but it, it, they are, they do exist, and it's important to know at least a little bit about them, so we don't make uneducated or ignorant comments about them if we do meet them. In order to help educate you guys, I will give a brief history about them, and include some controversies surrounding them, and their presence in today's modern culture. Their history is a long and complicated one. In the 60s, drag shows began on the rise across the country. San Francisco was the main hub for drag shows in general. As someone noted in this article, drag and the politics of gender presentation in the San Francisco gay liberation movement. Drag played a major role in the organization's social and cultural events, as well as in the broader culture of the San Francisco's homosexual community. Now this shows that uh, drag was an important part of the gay liberation movement. However, it's interesting to note that many homosexuals rejected drag queens and did not allow them to become to come to their organizations or club events. This is because they were afraid that drag would confuse society and make them think that all homosexuals want to be in drag or all drag were homosexuals. And now, drag, are, drag queens are no stranger to society's confusion about them. Many people don't understand the difference between transgender, drag queens, or being homosexual. As one excerpt said, titled The Social Meaning of Drag Queen Names, points out, in reality, drag queens may exhibit one of a number of sexualities, and in most cases, conduct, conduct their offstage lives as men. This is important to note, because drag queens can be homosexual, bisexual, transgender, or they're even heterosexual drag queens. This is an important distinction to make because, as I've mentioned, it is a common misconception in today's society. So it's important that we educate ourselves and note that, uh, note this distinction so that we don't make, continue this misconception in society. Now, although their history is a long and good one, there are no strangers to controversy. There has been much tension between drag queens and society, especially between drag queens and the police force. Many cops in old days, and still continue nowadays, have raided drag shows or arrested drag queens on the street. Um, to be fair, that many of these arrests probably were um, legitimate, but there has been a history of discrimination towards drag queens. One, art, or one news article titled, Drag Queen Bus Sparks Provincetown Riot, talked about one such case of a arrest of a drag queen in Provincetown, where she, after an end of summer's night party, put a toilet plunger on her friend's car. Now this is in common drag queen gag style, like as humor, but a cop saw this, not knowing the surrounding, that it was her friend's car, and arrested her on the spot, put her in handcuffs and put her in the back of the car. This sparked a riot of about 200 people came in, like, tried to stop the arrest. The police chief at the time defended the cop's um, behavior, saying that he didn't know the surrounding event, so he acted accordingly to what he did know. But what, as one bystander said, they're being quick to pull out the handcuffs, and there is a pattern of police ineptitude and failure to assess situations. Besides just controversy between drag queens and the police, Force. There's also controversy within the community. As I noted earlier, they have not always been accepted, even in their own LGBTQ community. However, drag queens also have not been receptive of other communities trying to become drag queens. 
Namely, drag queens have excluded transgender women and cis women, meaning, meaning comfortable in skin, meaning that these women are people that have, were born as women. One major example of this is RuPaul, one of the most famous drag queens on this earth right now. And his, his tweet saying that he would not allow a, a transgender drag queen to compete on his famous show, RuPaul's Drag Race. This sparked a lot of controversy because many people on the show have been transgender and they believe that all members should be included in the drag show. One, one female drag queen, Brandy Sky, in her article talked about this controversy, saying that drag is our safe space we've created for ourselves when the rest of the world condemned us. And it's important to note that in drag, everyone is brothers and sisters, and everyone should be accepted in the community. Drag has also become very popular in today's modern culture. It has been popularized by TV shows and nightclubs that headline these queens and allow them a stage and platform to show off their talents and expertise. RuPaul's Drag Race is the most famous show, and the communication and interaction between the queens on the show really help educate the audience and show what being a drag queen really means. Some quotes include, to be fishy, like, I know that sounds bad, like if you were to say, oh, you're being so fishy, like, fish usually smells, so it makes sense that that would be a rude thing to say. However, to be fishy actually means to be very feminine, and to make your illusion of being a woman actually real. So it's a compliment, and shows that one of the main goals of being drag is to be as feminine as possible and keep up the illusion. Another common subject of conversation and communication between the queens on the show is family and sisterhood. When I talk about family, I don't mean their blood relatives. I'm talking about drag families, including drag mothers and sisters. I know it sounds weird to have a drag mother, but these drag queens are people that take other drag queens under their wing and help teach them the ins and outs of clubs, how to do makeup, how to dress, giving them financial support. And it's very just a nice way for someone with expertise to transfer that on to someone else. Nathaniel Simmons actually analyzed the language used on season four of RuPaul's Drag Race and said that it reveals a sense of loyalty and comfort which are freely offered to members of the drag sisterhood. Another project titled, or another project helps to normalize drag queens in today's society, and it's called Drag Queen Story Hour. This is a project where a drag queen comes into a community place or a library and talks, reads a storybook to children. Um, one article titled Far From a Drag, How One Library Embraced Drag Queen Story Hour by Chelsea Condren described the positivity of these programs, saying gives kids glamorous, positive, and unabashedly queer role models. This is important because a lot of young kids in the LGBTQ community don't have much representation. So having this program really helps not only normalize drag queens in today's society, but also give kids that may aspire to be that one day a uh, role model to look up to. Now, as I said, drag queens have had to fight for acceptance into society and really have had a complicated and sometimes low history. I know a lot of you may not want to learn about drag queens because it's uncomfortable for you as you may have pre-existing beliefs, but it's important to know that they do exist and at least just educate yourself a little about them. Underneath them, underneath all the wigs, makeup, and beautiful dresses they wear, it's important to realize that they are human and they really are just professionals with a strong work ethic and confidence. Now, if you don't want to remember any of the history or information I shared about drag queens, at least take this quote from one drag queen Vizen, who said, stand up, be proud, and make sure your eyelashes don't fall off.